Today, we're going to discuss the first sign of kidney disease. And actually, this will surprise you. You know, the kidney is a filter and it converts blood into urine. And it's a fascinating piece of your body because it's not just a little passive filter. It does a lot. It recycles all your fluids. Let's say you drink, I don't know, eight glasses of water a day. Now, for those people in Europe, especially Dennis from Germany, uh, eight glasses of water per day is roughly about two liters. And so if you drink eight cups or two liters of fluid a day, you're going to pee out that amount right throughout the day. But think about this. The amount of fluid that travels through your kidney in a given day is 180 liters. That's 760 cups of fluid. So there's a lot of recycling going on in the kidney. It's a, a magical recycler because it recycles protein, uh, nutrients, hormones. It recycles like 99% of all the water that you drink. And so we have this magical little filter that has all these sensors that coordinate the amount of fluid in your body that help you convert vitamin D into the active form of vitamin D that help regulate your blood pressure and the hydration of your body and the elimination of toxins and drugs. And if you really appreciate what that nephron, the filter of your kidney does for you, you probably are going to think twice about eating junk food or, or consuming things that might harm the kidney because it's an amazing, amazing organ. Uh, an average person has between 1 million to 1.5 million of these little filters. They're called nephrons. And so when you start developing kidney disease, the amount of nephrons starts to decrease to the point where you might end up with half of your nephrons. And also as you age, you lose your nephrons. So we have a decreased ability to do all this magic and filter out things. There is this one underlying most common cause of kidney disease, as well as end stage renal failure. And that relates to diabetes. It's called diabetic nephropathy. Nephro meaning kidney, apathy meaning disease. So it's this high blood glucose situation that is the most common reason why the kidney gets destroyed. And the mechanism of how this filter gets destroyed is this. When you have high levels of sugar interacting with these uh, protein enzymes and other protein structures, you start to get this reaction called glycation. And that's the morphing when you have sugar and proteins, okay? It starts to damage these proteins to the point where they become unavailable. And the medical term for this is called advanced glycation end products. So when you have a lot of those, you have a combination of um, nephrons or these little filters that don't work anymore, um, or they're all gunked up with protein that is uh, stuck in there and they can't filter. And so the key thing that they diagnose um, kidney disease with is the amount of protein in your urine. Because if we get less recycling of the protein, it ends up in your urine, not actually pulled into the body. And so protein in the urine means there's kidney damage with that little filter. And also because it's ending up in the urine, there's going to be less protein in your blood. And that main symptom is edema, okay? And it could be um, all over. Your body is just filled with fluid. So you'll be puffing the face, fluid in your hands and your legs all over. And the interesting thing about kidney disease is it's when the disease starts, okay, it takes 10 years sometimes before you even notice the first symptom, okay? And so now I'm going to tell you the first symptom that a person will experience with kidney disease. It is nocturia. Now, what is nocturia? That is a situation where you're urinating at night, okay, usually multiple times, and it's very difficult for you to um, hold your urine throughout the night. That is one of the first signs that means there's something going on with your kidney. And it makes a lot of sense because the majority of diabetics also have that same symptom. And it also makes sense because diabetes usually takes 10 years before you start noticing problems. So kidney problems go hand in hand with diabetes. And one thing about diabetes is that it affects four tissues. One is the kidney, okay, which we're talking about now. Next one is the eye. Next one is the nervous system, okay? And then the arteries. And so with kidney problems, you're going to see protein in the urine and you're going to see a decreased filtration rate. We no longer have the filtering 
mechanism going on. So we have a lot of backup with toxins. We have a loss of a lot of nutrients, including amino acids. Then we get a lot of edema. But because there's a huge delay of 10 years, it's difficult to identify the cause and effect relationship. But I have found the most successful way to get rid of this nocturia is just to simply handle the blood sugar situation. So let's talk about that for a second. So in medicine, they will tell you that diabetes is basically a situation where you have poorly controlled blood sugar levels. So the key word with that is controlled, or they use this other term called managed. They manage the complications of diabetes. They manage the symptoms of diabetes. Okay, that's kind of interesting. You're going to manage these complications and symptoms, but what about correcting it? You know, they, they don't really get into that. Why not manage or control what the patient is actually putting in their mouth? And I'm talking about sugar. The amount of sugar or carbohydrate that an average person consumes in America is astronomical. If you, especially if you take all the hidden uh, carbohydrates like the breads, the pasta, the cereal crackers, you're talking a massive amount of sugar, right? And it's just so obvious why we have diabetics in the world because they're consuming too many carbohydrates. Yet the American Diabetes Association uh, still to this day does not tell you how much carbs you need to control. They know there's a link. They know you need to reduce your carbs, which is great, but they don't tell you how much you should lower your carbs. Instead, there's all sorts of ways of managing your blood sugar and the complications. What are the complications? Well, uh, fluid retention. So we can manage that with a diuretic. Uh, we also have high cholesterol. We can manage that with statins. We also have high blood pressure. We can manage that with high blood pressure medication. And of course, the blood sugars could be managed by metformin and insulin and other medications for diabetes. But my question is this. When you manage the blood sugars, remove the sugar out of the blood, where does it go? Is it just magically evaporate? Does it just disappear? It's just moved from one place in the body to another place. It's moved from the blood into your cells, into your liver, around the organs, converted into fat. I mean, what about the complications of all the medications that you're using to manage these complications from diabetes? I mean, just it's just bizarre. So whether you have kidney problems or you want to prevent kidney problems or you're getting up at night right now urinating, um, there's several things you can do to turn this thing around. The first thing and the most obvious thing is to reduce the amount of sugar in your bloodstream, okay? That would mean going on a ketogenic eating plan, okay? Second thing is doing intermittent fasting because the less you eat, the less you will raise insulin, the less insulin resistance you'll have, and the less diabetes you'll have. So those go hand in hand. And the type of intermittent fasting that I would recommend is the type that I'm doing right now which is one and a half meals a day. Now, what does that mean? You have your, your big meal uh, a little bit after noon or maybe right at noon, okay? So you have your protein, your fat. Um, and then later, I like to do it at three o'clock, but maybe you can do it later at six o'clock. You can, you can call it your second meal or your half a meal, but you're not really doing a lot of protein. You're not doing a lot of fat. You're doing all your vegetable carbohydrates, okay? And so what I do right around three, maybe 3.30 at the very latest, I'll have this big salad with roughly about seven to 10 cups. It's usually about 10 cups, but maybe you could do seven cups. And it's a big salad. It's easy to eat. I'm not going to eat anything else. So I have my protein and fat at 12. And at three, I have my big salad. That way, it's easier to eat the salad because I could take my time. I do put various things on the salad. I'll definitely put olive oil Sometimes I'll use apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I use balsamic vinaigrette. I'll put little seeds on that, little nuts, but it's mainly greens. And I might do different types of greens. I like to use arugula uh, or cabbage sometimes, but if I'm doing cabbage, I'm not doing seven to 10 cups, right? So when you're doing more dense vegetables, you can do a lot less. When I talk about seven to 10 cups, I'm talking about the lettuce leaves, okay? So that seems to work really good. I like it because it gives me a very long fasting period, okay? And uh, am I hungry for that salad? Uh, no, because I just ate, you know, a few hours before. But roughly, it gives me like 21 hours of fasting. Now, a couple of very important things about that salad that I want to mention in relationship to what we're talking about. You know, people always talk about, oh, yeah, there's vitamins and minerals in salad. Um, well, there's also something 
very important in relationship to the complications of kidney disease and the complications of diabetes. And that is phytonutrients, okay? Phytonutrients have all sorts of pretty cool properties, but the big one is nephroprotection. They protect the kidney against oxidation and complications of high blood sugar. So if you took two diabetics, right, and you side to side, and um, you gave one a diet with low phytonutrients, and you gave the other one a diet high in phytonutrients, both of them would still be a diabetic, but the one with the phytonutrients would have a lot less complications, okay? So apparently, these phytonutrients or they have antioxidant properties. They help reduce the oxidation. They act to neutralize a lot of the bad effects of all this high glucose flowing through your bloodstream. So that's why you should be consuming this large salad every single day. Yes, it has magnesium and vitamin C and potassium, which by the way, is very important for the kidney to protect it. Of course, the only time I would recommend not doing it is if you have end-stage kidney disease, then you have to get with your doctor. But I'm talking about potassium from the food. So plant phytonutrients are definitely on the list. Uh, the next thing I want to mention, and this is a remedy that you can get, and it's very powerful, and there's a lot of research behind it. It's called benfotamine. It's a type of vitamin B1 that is fat-soluble, and it really helps reduce the complications in a powerful way of diabetes. Like I said, reduce the glycation effect, decrease oxidative stress, and protect the cells. This is why uh, benfotamine is really good for peripheral neuropathy as well. That's the damage of the nerves on the bottom of the feet, as well as um, problems with your eye called diabetic retinopathy. But it's also really good to decrease the complications from diabetic nephropathy, okay, damage to the kidney. You basically take one pill, which I think is uh, usually like 300 milligrams, uh, four times a day. Another thing that you could add if you really wanted to, um, it's not totally necessary if you're doing all these other things I'm recommending, but alpha lipoic acid is another powerful way to decrease the complications from this condition. Another thing you can use is, is uh, turmeric, okay? Turmeric has this uh, phytonutrient called curcumin, which is extremely potent in decreasing the symptoms, the signs, the complications of diabetes. We want to reduce the amount of carbohydrates and we want to actually correct the underlying problem. And that's why keto and intermittent fasting are a necessity. But at the same time, we can do some great things by reducing all these other side effects that are occurring because of the high blood sugar. As an experiment, okay, if you're unwilling to lower your carbohydrates, maybe you just want to prove it to yourself and see how these other things can work by adding some of these remedies to see how it can actually reduce maybe even the need for medication or the amount of medication you're taking. Of course, check with your doctor, but it can definitely help you. So anyway, I just wanted to cover this topic and give you some information that you need to use if you have this problem. And I think if you are urinating at night frequently, um, this is exactly what I would recommend. Now you might say, well, there's no way that I'm a diabetic. Um, you know, I don't, I have, a, I have my blood pressure checked. Well, you should actually get a test called HOMA IR, which measures the insulin resistance, which happens way before diabetes. But the point is there is a connection between the carbohydrates that you eat and uh, nocturia, getting up in the middle of the night and urinating. Now to have the right plan in place, to know what to eat and how to do intermittent fasting, I have my very simple playlist up here. You should check this out right here.